Welcome. I'm Jan Rosa, and I'm presenting our work, Explainable Image Quality Analysis of Chest X-rays. To begin with, I would like to mention some brief information about medical image quality issues. We would like to ensure high quality during a medical test so that the clinicians can assess the image more accurately in terms of diagnosis and come up with an adequate treatment. However, not always we can have an image with high quality at the time of acquisition. This may be caused due to image artifacts in CT, MRI, and X-ray imaging modalities, as you see one example on the right, and can be evaluated by quantitative metrics such as PSNR and SSIM. In addition, there may be other causes of image quality issues to persist, such as foreign object existence, which I will be discussing later on. These types of problems may require in-depth analysis by manually annotating the regions causing the problem. In this regard, our main motivation is to propose a framework which can accelerate the image acquisition procedure by implementing a foreign object classification system on chest X-rays. Classification of foreign objects will trigger an alert such that the reacquisition procedure will immediately take place. In addition, we would like this system to be completely interpretable for a likely clinical usage, while the interpretation method will also be reliable. One avenue for evaluating the reliability is by measuring the consistency between the interpretation method and ground truth bounding box annotations. Our contributions are as follows. First, we utilize a 7C detector named Normgrad in order to interpret a foreign object classifier that works on chest X-rays. After that, we compare the interpretation results, namely the salience map of Normgrad with other baseline methods such as GradCam, input times gradient, and guided back propagation. Suppose that we have an input image X in which we feed it into a neural network that is composed of preceding layers P, a predefined target layer KT, a virtual identity layer KT dot T, and the remainder layers Q. X is fed into P to obtain XN, which will be turned into XL as a result of the transformation in the target layer. After that, Piled KT might be used for obtaining gradients and activations at an exact location where necessary. Finally, the network decision Y is obtained after providing X out to the following layers. It is also important to keep the upstream gradient of the target layer in mind. In our paper, we utilize normgrad in order to interpret the spatial contributions of a target layer in a pre-trained neural network for foreign object classification on chest X-rays. It can be seen that a virtual identity layer is placed between the CNN and gap layers. This will help us to gather the activations and gradients of a target layer, which will be combined to obtain a spatial contribution. If we add place a virtual identity convolutional layer, which has a kernel size of one by one, the spatial contribution is obtained by subplotting the activations and the gradients along the channel axis and taking the dot product. We then reshape the spatial contribution in order to preserve the original layer spatial size. Lastly, we take the Frobenius norm along the channel axis and upsample the output to the origin image size. Thus, we localize the foreign objects within the patient, patient record if those are present according to the neural network decision. Although our previous slide only simulates how it works for a one by one convolution of virtual identity layer, we can also use other variants as the target layer choice. Using a bias layer will result in taking the Frobenius norm of the upstream gradient, whereas scaling layer can apply the Frobenius norm on the element-wise product 
of the upstream gradient and the output activations. The function of a convolution n by n layer will be the dot product of the Frobenius norm of activations and the gradients. A different feature of norm grad is its ability to use layers other than the penultimate layer efficiently, in contrast to other methods such as GRADCAN. This brings us an important advantage to understand the internal representations within the network from a more global point of view. One way of achieving this can be performed by multiplying the spatial contributions of different target layers in an event-wise manner. In this work, we give equal priority to each of these contributions during the multiplication. We test our approach on the object Texas ray de challenge data set, where the goal is detecting and localizing the foreign objects on chess X rays. There exists 8,000 images for training, 1,000 for validation, and 1,000 for testing, and there is an even split of images which do and do not contain foreign objects. While we only leverage the imageable labels for training the network, we use the bounding box annotations just for showing the strength of norm grad. Our pre-trained model for classifying the existence of foreign objects is originally a resonatory form model. It is trained by using an input size of 600 by 600, base size of 16, and learning rate of 0 0.005. After training our network for 20 epochs with a cross entropy loss function, we achieve an area under curve score of 0.937 on the testing split. We test our methodology through extensive qualitative and quantitative analysis. In this example, we see that although both GRADCAM and NormGrad approaches localize four of the target objects, NormGrad is better at pointing the center of the target objects with less skewness. During an event of misclassification by the pretained model, GRADCAM highlights the regions outside the target object of interest, even though NormGrad accurately targets a foreign object. For this reason, we see that NormGrad is more robust to potential misclassifications performed by the model. As a way of quantitative measurement, we use pointing gain to see if the saliency maps are aligned to the foreign objects. We calculate the distance between a bounding box and the maximum location of the saliency map and see whether that distance is within a tolerance range. If the location of the maximum saliency map value is closer, close to either one of the bounding boxes with an offset, we consider it as a hit as shown in the right figure. Otherwise, it will be declared as a miss. We calculate the accuracy measured by dividing the number of hits to the number of images. In our evaluation study, we see a notable poor performance when selecting the bias as the virtual identity layer type. This highlights the importance of using activations alongside gradients when calculating the spatial contribution. For the rest of the other virtual identity layer types, the performance of the methods is generally comparable. Secondly, we observe that CLNC map comp combination strategy do not always lead to superior performance. However, this can still be considered as an achievement since obtaining spatial contributions with GRADCAM at early layers would be problematic and unreliable, as mentioned in some of the previous papers. We run a benchmark across six methodologies. First of all, we see a notable proof performance of input times gradient and guided back propagation. This can be altered to their noisy spatial contribution pattern. In addition, the accuracy of guided GRADCAM is in between guided back propagation and GRADCAM as expected, since it is a advanced modification of these two methods. Among all of the methods except for non-GRAD, we see that GRADCAM provides more reliable saliency maps. However, as we discussed earlier, it may be problematic when the 
model classifies the images incorrectly. Both normgrad methods demonstrate superior performance in pointing gain benchmark comparing the Bayesian models. To conclude, we propose an automated framework for X-ray foreign object classification in which we leverage the ResNet 34 background. To localize the foreign objects that exist within an image, we use normgrad, which effectively combines the virtual identity layer strategy with probing its norm in order to construct a saliency map. While we demonstrate the superiority of normgrad after comparing other state-of-the-art methods in pointing gain benchmark for object checks X-ray dataset, we are interested in expanding to different classification-based problems in other medical image quality modalities as well. We have open sourced our code to make our research reproducible. For any questions, you can attend to the discussion section on Friday at 1 p.m. local time, or you can send me an email. Thank you for listening.